Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a new kit. We've sold manometers before, and we've sold the UEI manometers before, and we love them. But the new kit I really like a lot, and that's the UEI EM720 SPKIT, and that stands for Static Pressure Kit. And it is a full kit. Let's get into why I love it so much and why you're going to want it on your truck and a little bit of uh, what, what you're going to do with it. It comes with a magnetic mount, as you can see, really, really nice. Stick it on the side of the furnace, stops it from getting stepped on, sat on, or in the water. It comes with two T's so you can, and tubing, so you can put this in between an inducer motor and pressure switch, or a collector box and a pressure switch, so you can help diagnose, is the pressure switch bad? Is it not pulling enough? Is the pressure switch have a pinhole and it's leaking on the suction side? Comes with two of the T's. For gas pressure, it comes with two ways, a little threaded fitting and what I call a friction push that slides over a nipple. Two gas valves, they come different ways nowadays. The brass threaded fitting that just goes to a barb fitting, that'll be on our Gibson, our Peerless, and a lot of aftermarket gas valves that you put on for replacement. We'll have the threaded fitting to check gas pressure, so you've got that. And then our Napoleon, our Renai, and our Bosch have a larger nipple. I'm going to show you a picture right here. And you're going to take the screw out, slide this over, and then it reduces to the hose that comes in the case. So you got 60 inches of hose in the case. So it's really, really good. So you're set up for both. Static pressure checking. So it comes with two of the probes. And I've got a video, I'll link that one below, on checking static pressure. If you've got airflow issues, if you've got something going on with the system, knowing where it is, is it the filter, is it the A-coil, is it the ductwork, the drop, the blower motor, the blower wheel is dirty, knowing what's going on, really, really handy. Again, it has 60 inches of tubing inside the case. I don't like strange batteries, and you know it. AA batteries, we all carry those on our trucks for thermostats. This takes three AA batteries. I like that a lot. Now, what can you do with this piece of equipment? Static pressure testing again. Find out where the airflow problem is. Don't just condemn the piece of equipment. See what's going on. Gas pressure. New installs. We have a lot of new installs where from the factory, the gas pressure is almost double what it should be. You should always check your gas pressure on a new install, always. When you change a gas valve on a repair on an older piece of equipment, you absolutely have to check gas pressure because that gas valve is just a generic gas valve built for many applications. Set it up for what you need. You set it to what's factory set on that furnace. Pressure switches. Again, knowing what's the problem. I've had situations where the trap leaked so there was no longer a trap. It was sucking air in. The guy put in two, three, four pressure switches before calling me and putting a manometer on and saying, okay, what's it actually pulling? Most times with pressure switches, it's gonna pull three quarter to a full inch over what it's rated. If you have a pressure switch that's rated 1.5 and you put your manometer on there and it's pulling 1.6, it's not enough. Just because that pressure switch is rated at 1.5, it could be off, and that's far too close. Most of the time, we're almost a full inch over, and that stops fluttering. It stops if you, your vent goes outside on a windy side of the house. It doesn't affect the pressure switch not closing. So checking pressure switches is a big deal. Checking the inducer and the venting. If you connect to the inducer motor, if that thing's pulling it up and there's still venting connected, you know that your vent is clear. If you put it on the inducer motor and it's not pulling enough, then it could be just that there's a bird in your venting, there's water in your venting, a, you know, a droop in the PVC venting allowed water to build up. It could be a plugged pressure tube going between the inducer and the pressure switch. So I will have a, a video linked below where I tell you when I would tee in, when I wouldn't, the procedure of how I would check the collector box the inducer motor, the venting, all that stuff. Too often, guys don't check gas pressure when they really should be doing. Too often, guys take the time to run to a wholesaler, 
pick up a pressure switch, drive all the way back to the job, put the new pressure switch in, only to realize that the pressure switch that was there was working perfectly fine. The pressure switch code, it could mean a bad pressure switch, but it also could mean something wrong with the venting, the drain, the inducer motor, the heat exchanger is plugged up, so there's multiple things that could be happening. Having a decent manometer on your truck so you can diagnose these things is key. I keep my phone on 24 hours a day. I get calls from contractors all the time, and when I talk to them and they did not bring a manometer into the site, it's a little irritating, it's a little bit of a waste of time, because that's gonna tell me whether they need a pressure switch, an inducer motor, there's something going on with the venting, or it's a, it's a plug secondary. I mean, we have to know what to look at next. A manometer is your best friend at that point, and this one is a really, really good one. Now, our website, which should be up here someplace, you can put in EM720SPKIT, and it'll bring you right to it. You can put in 720, you can put in manometer. It will get you there in a, in a jiffy. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.